the Laboratory of Food Science at Jodelu Gießen introduces an effect-directed workflow to discover estrogen-active compounds in beer. For this bioactivity profiling, high-performance synlayer chromatography, HPTLC, is combined with bioassays and further hyphenations, such as mass spectrometry. To discover estrogen-effective compounds, the Blenar Yeast Estrogen Screen, PES, is selected out of the many bioassays reported so far. The experiments were performed in an S1 certified laboratory. The PES bioassays uses recombinant Saccharomyces cerevisiae cells containing the human estrogen receptor HER-alpha, which were generated by McDonnell et al. in 1991. The medium for the yeast cells consisted of glucose, yeast nitrogen base and certain amino acids, a nuclein base and copper sulfate, which were whited, mixed and dissolved in bee distilled water. The dissolved compounds were autoclaved at 120 degrees for 30 seconds, except for the heat level amino acids, which were added in a clean bench via sterile filtration with a filter of a pore size of 0 0.22 micrometer. 30 ml of the sterile medium were filled into a sterile cultivation flask and inoculated with 1 ml yeast cell suspension. The latter had a concentration of 10 up 8 cells per 1 ml gross, medium supplemented with 30% glycerol and stored as cryostock at minus 80 degrees until use. This inoculated culture medium was incubated at 30 degrees in an incubator positioned on a shaker at 100 rotations per minute for approximately 18 hours. After the incubation of the culture, the proper growth and vitality of the yeast cells were controlled. To count the cell number in a foam chamber, 100 microliter of the cell suspension were dissolved 1 to 10, with a physiological 0.9% sodium chloride solution. For the PS application, the suspension was adjusted to be 5 times 10 up 8 cells per 40 ml medium. 150 micromole copper sulfate were added. The final glucose content was 0.25%. Note that for evaluation of the cell viability, a 0.4% aqueous trepan blue solution can be added to the 100 microliter cell suspension during cell counting in the foam chamber. 14 different beer samples were investigated for estrogen effective compounds present. The sample preparation of the complex beer samples was reduced to a minimum. 5 ml of the beer were pipetted into a sample class and degassed in an ultrasonic bath for 30 minutes. Then the degassed beer was 1 to 1 diluted with methanol by pipetting 750 microliter beer and 750 microliter methanol into an Eppendorf cap. It was mixed and centrifuged at 10,000 G for 5 minutes. All beer samples were prepared this way. After the centrifugation, each supernatant was transferred into a 1.8 ml sampler wheel. This sample solution was subjected to HPTLC analysis. Before the application, the clean HPTLC plate was documented in VisionCats using the TLC visualizer. The degassed and diluted beer samples were applied using the automated TLC sampler ATS4. After positioning of the plate and the solutions into the rack, the procedure for automated spray-on application using VisionCats was started. After rinsing the ATS4 syringe, 300 microliter of each beer solution were withdrawn and sprayed on the plate as aerosol by nebulizing with nitrogen gas. Each sample solution was applied in form of a rectangle of 10 times 30 mm to spread the huge beer matrix over a large adsorbent area. The dosage speed was 800 nanoliter per second. Now the samples were applied. 
using the TLC visualizer and the software vision cats the starting zones were documented. Next, two focusing steps were performed in the automatic development chamber ADC2, guided by the software vision cats. Focusing was required for front illusion of the analytes, thereby the metrics remained distributed over the start zone. The focusing step was performed with isopropyl acetate up to 35 mm and then repeated, taking all in all 10 minutes. The focusing solvent was pured into the chamber from the left corner. The plate was lowered into the solvent and the focusing, meaning the front illusion of the analytes, started. The CCD element, red flashlight, monitored the developing distance. After both focusing steps, development with anaxane, toluene and ethyl acetate in the ratio 6 to 3 to 4 followed analogously which took a total time of 15 minutes. When it reached the migration front of 70 mm, the blade was removed and tried. Using a TLC visualizer, documentation of the chromatogram at UV254, UV366 and under white light illumination followed. The analytes were front eluted and separated, but not yet visible. However, the beer sample matrix was clearly visible due to its brown color which remained distributed over the starting rectangle or because of its blue fluorescence at UV366 nanometer. After step 1, the parallel separation of the peer samples, step 2, the bioassays application followed. For biodetection of the estrogen effective analytes, the developed plate was automatically immersed into the cell suspension for 5 seconds using the chromatogram immersion device at an immersion speed of 3.5 cm per second. The glass plate's rear was cleaned with a tissue and a seated plate was horizontally incubated in a plastic box with an almost 100% humidified air surrounding. The box was lined with filter paper, wetted with deionized water and stored at 30 degrees in the incubator one hour prior. During the incubation, any estrogen effective compound zone in the chromatogram that interacted with the human estrogen receptor finally released galactosidase. In the incubator, the incubation of the blade was performed at 30 degrees for 3 hours. After the blade had been tried for 2 minutes, the blade was immersed into the substrate solution, which was methylambelliferone galactoside MUG. The reaction with the MUG substrate solution was intended for determination of the released galactosidase, which cleaved the galactose from the MUG. Thus, the blue fluorescent methylambelliferone MU was formed during the second incubation period of one hour at 37 degrees. The substrate reaction was terminated by immersion of the plate into a solution of glycine and sodium hydroxide. 0.1 mole pH 12. White light and fluorescence images at UV366 nanometer were captured using the ReproStar 3 documentation system in the S1 laboratory. The blue MU fluorescence of estrogen effective compounds was measured at 366 nanometer using an edge filter of 400 nanometer and a mercury lamp of the TLC scanner 3. Mass spectrometry followed. The illusion head based TLC MS interface, marked gray on the left side, was used for illusion of zones of interest. Estrogen effective zones were marked with a soft pencil and the TLC MS interface was connected with a single quadrupole mass spectrometer. Of course, a high resolution mass spectrometer is recommended for characterization of unknown bioactive compounds. However, it was not available. Directed by a red laser cross, the zone of interest was positioned below the oval illusion head. After illusion of a blank, Representing mass signals of blade background, solvents and MS system, the zone of interest was eluded at a flow rate of 0.1 milliliter per minute 
using a 49 to 1 mixture of methanol and a 10 millimole ammonium formiate buffer of pH 4. The software Advion Mass Express recorded the elution chronogram in the negative ion mode, first of the plank at around 3 minutes, then of the estrogen effective zone at approximately 7 minutes. The respective mass spectrum of the estrogen effective zone was extracted. The respective mass signals were clearly visible at mass overcharge for the deprotonated molecule. The imprint of the oval elution head was visible after the elution. The use of HBTLC offers greatly simplified separation. It's certainly no match for HBLC or GC in terms of resolution and separation number. But it can separate a complex mixture with little to no sample preparation. In HBTLC, the samples remain as native as possible for profiling. In combination with a bioassay, a non-target bioactivity screening of food samples is created. Of course, with regard to a selected effect. As only the discovered effective compounds are further characterized by mass spectrometry, this effect-directed analysis is perfectly suited for streamlined effect-directed profiling of many samples in parallel.